electromagnetic interference (EMI) is an electromagnetic emission that causes interference in another electronic device. EMI can be conducted or radiated. Radiated emissions cover a higher frequency, range typically from thirty megahertz to thousand megahertz, and it travels through space. We can either use proper layout and circuit design to attenuate the noise at the source, or shield it to contain the noise. Conducted emissions are typically from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, and travel through conductors. We can use electrical filters to control them. Here we see a modeling diagram of a conducted EMI in a switching system. We have the device under test, DUT. Normally, a switching device. The propagation paths for common mode CM and differential mode DM, and EMI measurement line impedance stabilization network, listen, and the spectrum analyzer. We said that conducted EMI must have conductive paths. It's easy to imagine that the noise can be circulated in the normal circuit paths, zero phase to neutral. These noises are differential mode noise. They flow in power lines with opposite directions. It's current driven, di over dt. Another path is from phase to ground, and from nature to ground. Through the parasitic capacitor, it's called common mode noise (CM). Current flows in power lines with the same direction. It's voltage-driven, dV over dT. If we don't put the listen here, DM-CM noises flow back to the power supply. Listen is here to trap the EMI so that we can measure it precisely. Without influencing the main power supply, the main part of listen is a cable. We know a cable can have inductance. We have a listen with fifty millihertz, equivalent to twenty-five thirty meters of cable, or we can have five millihertz, equivalent to three meters cable. For for example, for battery-powered system. Then, to avoid the inductor from the power influencing our measurement, we put a capacitor in front of the listen to derive the noise from the source power supply. Now we have a LC filter, which can have a resonant frequency. Thus, a resistor is added to dampen the oscillation. Now we want to add something to really measure the noise generated from the DUT. We add a capacitor so the high frequency noise see a small impedance here and flows this way. But we don't want the capacitor builds up, so we add a resistor of one、uh, kilo ohm to reduce the DC current. Then、uh, we have the spectrum analyzer connected between the capacitor and the resistor, with a 50 ohm resistor. The one kilo ohm in parallel with the 50 ohm approximately 50 ohm resistor together. The resistor will capture the noise, and the spectrum analyzer will show us the EMI. This structure is connected to each line, and、uh, some elements can be simplified. For example, the damping resistor at the input side, or sometimes the one kilo ohm just、uh, replaced by fifty ohm. To reduce EMI, we can try to generate lights at the source, which is not included in this video. Another way is to add filters on the propagation path. 
Passive EMI filtering is uh, the most common approach. They use only uh, passive components. Two fundamental ways exist, add serious impedance as inductor or add parallel impedance as capacitor. The formula for their impedance calculation is here. The simplest type is called a first-order filter, consisting of just a simple passive component. Capacitors shut noise current away from a load, while inductors block or reduce the noise. Generally, these single component filters have a small attenuation. To achieve bigger attenuation, we need a second order filter. They have two passive components. This filter is sometimes uh, called air filter. We have to consider filter resonance and uh, damping. A third order filter has uh, three passive elements. These type of uh, filters are called pi or t filters. The problem of uh, uh, this filter is the physical size is bigger, but the third order filter is the most popular filter. Now, how do you determine which configuration to use? Well, uh, one aspect of filter design is uh, impedance mismatch. The first uh, filter element nearest the switching device should provide the highest possible mismatch, meaning high frequency, high impedance should match a high frequency, low element impedance, uh, which is a capacitor, and uh, low impedance should match a higher frequency, high element impedance, which is a inductor. Typically, this means uh, that if the switching device impedance is uh, low, uh, smaller than 100 ohms, then the first filter element should be an inductor. Otherwise, if the impedance is uh, high, bigger than 100 ohms, the first filter element should be a capacitor.